Today we have the 2020 Mitsubishi Eclipse Cross. Now this is not the Eclipse you think of, so let's clear the air right away. This is a unique offering for a compact SUV. So there's four different trim levels, the ES, LE, SE, SEL, which we have right here. The ES is gonna start just under 23 grand, and this one we have is just over 32 grand. Now starting out with the headlights, we have LED daytime running lights standard on all trims, running right below the headlights. Halogen bulbs are standard on every trim except this top SEL trim, which gives us LED headlights. And then halogen fog lights are standard across every single trim. And at night, these LED headlights that we have right here do very well. They can even move up and down with a switch inside the cabin, the low beams, the high beams, they're all pretty darn bright. The grill's gonna differ a little between trims. On the top two SE and SEL trims, you'll get chrome accents and you'll also have gloss black uh, on the center bumper for these top two trims as well, as opposed to the lower trims. And this paint is the Octane Blue Metallic, and this is a very vibrant paint. This paint really stands out. It's quite a bright blue color. I'd love to know what you think of it down below as well. The wheels are gonna vary on each trim. The base model gets 16 inch wheels. The rest of them will get 18 inch wheels. But on the top, two trims are gonna be a little bit different. We've got these two-tone 18 inch wheels that have 225, 55 series tires. Standard on every single trim is gonna be chrome window molding, as you can see, and body color door handles as well. And the mirrors are all gonna have uh, turn signals in them. That is standard across every trim, which is nice to see. They are power folding on the SE and the SEL. Now Mitsubishi calls this a compact crossover. It's 173 inches long, as opposed to the Outlander, which is an entire foot longer. So this is a little bit of a weird play from Mitsubishi. It's smaller than some that might people might compete it with, but larger than others. So it's kind of an in-betweener in terms of size. It has an independent rear suspension, and once we get around to the back, it reminds me of the Pontiac Aztec, and I know I'm not the only one who thinks this. I'm not particularly fond of the rear end. I do, pro I do prefer the front end, so let me know what you think below. And then we have LED taillights and an LED center-mounted brake light. The cargo area for the Eclipse Cross is certainly not class-leading. There's a little touch pad under there, and you give it a little pull, and you can open it right up and there's a little grab handle up here as well to make it easier to get it down. Now, I've got a carry-on suitcase and just kind of a regular size backpack. It is a nice flat load floor right there. You've got a pretty sturdy uh, little cargo tray. There's a small little bin on the side here. There's also a hook right next to that light which can come handy with uh, groceries and things like that. You've got a slot for your tonneau cover. And the tonneau cover actually is pretty small, pretty far forward, and that's because those seats can recline. Now you can put a stand-up carry-on suitcase in here, and of course you can take your uh, cargo cover off, but as you can see, the space is pretty small. For a, a crossover SUV like this, when I just lay that down, it takes up almost the entire space. So um, it's definitely on the smaller side but you can fold the seats down as well, which is nice. And underneath of here is a spare tire and a couple extra little storage bins, but it's not like a two level cargo floor. One positive to it being a little smaller and a little shorter is that with this 40, 60 split folding rear seat, you can just reach right up ahead, and knock that out of the way on either side. And it's not, super flat of course it does have a little bit of an incline like that but still a usable space that you can shove some larger items in here and it still probably be okay Mitsubishi calls their smart key system the fast key system and this is only on the top two trims there's a physical key that you can pull out of here if you need to but you only have your lock and unlock no remote start and no power tailgate so the way that this one works is it's all with that button you just push it to lock it or unlock it no sensor behind there and that's all now hopping into the front seats every single trim level except this top trim level so the bottom three are going to give you six-way manual seats the bottom two trims are going to give you fabric cloth seats while the se gives you high grade fabric one thing that i really appreciate is that every seat or every trim except the base model gives you heated seats 
Then once you get to the top SEL trim that we have right here, you'll get eight-way power adjustable seats that are leather. The only thing is they don't have adjustable lumbar support, not on any trim, not on any vehicle. The seats themselves are still comfortable. I've been comfortable in them, and at five foot nine, I have good room right here. There's really good headroom in this vehicle, which is which is always appreciated. And the seats have some decent bolstering around the edges. They've got contrast stitching on them. They look pretty nice. They feel pretty nice. And uh, just I just wish that they had adjustable lumbar support because it is a little bit of a slouched position. There's not a whole lot of lower back support. The top two trims, SE and SEL, give you a leather wrapped steering wheel. It is tilt and telescoping on every trim and it's got a decent range of motion. And this top trim has an optional heated steering wheel. Now taking a quick look at the interior of the Eclipse Cross. First, right up top, this armrest is not necessarily soft, but we have soft material right next to your forearm right there. And this armrest is really well padded and it seems to go well right into this door handle. So I've been comfortable with that. Only the driver's window is automatic up down. You won't find memory seats or settings like that on here, but you have your mirror controls and your power folding button as well. Good big storage bin right there. My large bottle fits in here no problems. And then a nice little touch from Mitsubishi on the top two trims is its actual chrome door handle. Then right on the inside we've got forward collision, lane departure warning and traction control buttons as well as your interior buttons right here. So interior brightness controls which actually haven't worked for me at all. They don't, haven't done anything. You can turn your head up display off and on and move it up and down on its little spot. And then this is the switch that actually moves the headlights up and down depending on you know different needs maybe in some foggy bad weather you'd want to point them down or whatever the case may be now mitsubishi gives us a leather steering wheel on this trim you've got little sport grips over here and you've got these huge paddle shifters that are completely separate from the actual steering wheel so they actually feel really nice and high quality although in this vehicle they're relatively useless i just don't use them but you've got a quick button to get to your surround view camera voice controls bluetooth and you've got cruise control you've got your distance settings right here and it's been pretty easy to use the thing i don't like about the steering wheel though is this piano black glossy black trim that's on here i just don't like cheap plastic being on my steering wheel where i'm hanging on so i just prefer full-on leather and we have the push button start And let's start things off with this head-up display right here, which is on the top trim. So it shows you your speed. It shows you uh, your, your basically your uh, cruise control and all of that. So it can be helpful with that. It, it doesn't have lane keeping assist, so it doesn't necessarily show you that. But it'll show you your warning messages up here as well. The gauges here for the Mitsubishi do a nice job of being easy to read. You've got two big ones on the side. And then down on the bottom, you have these, this stays static. You've got your temperature and then your fuel gauge, as well as your odometer. But then the rest of it is what changes. And the thing I don't like about this for Mitsubishi is that you have to reach over here behind the steering wheel. You have to reach behind it to change stuff. So, so you use the arrows to change things. And it's just an outdated looking system. Um, you know, it shows you some, some necessary information like a trip computer, which is nice, but overall it just, it's just not that nice. Now looking at the rest of the interior, it seems to be pretty well done and it's got a solid feel to it. You have some uh, piano black, cheaper material, but a carbon fiber looking material up here, some trim pieces, and uh, Mitsubishi's done a nice job of kind of making this look a little more modern, although the tablet style screen is certainly up for debate with a lot of people. Now every single Eclipse Cross is going to get a 7 inch screen like the standard. However, on the base model you'll get HD radio with 4 speakers and Apple CarPlay and Android Auto will not be standard. Once you get to the LE trim you'll get this particular uh, touch screen which has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, Sirius XM. Uh, the top two trims get 6 speakers but we have the Rockford Fosgate system which is upgraded and gives us a subwoofer. The screen itself seems to work fine. I can uh, touch it and it seems to be responsive. Everything on here is touch sensitive though. Even the home button, the apps if you've got Apple CarPlay going, and the volume over there, which I am not a big fan of touch volume. I thought people learned their lessons 
from Honda. And all but the base model give us this touch pad. This touch pad is not my friend. It's not my favorite. You can adjust the sensitivity, but you just don't make a lot of headway. It's not like a cursor to where when you move your finger in certain parts of the screen, it's going to follow you. It doesn't work like that. So personally, I just have quit using this. You have a couple of shortcuts just to get to your audio or apps with your smartphone or home button, but otherwise, it's not my favorite. There are our two tier heated seat buttons, the super all wheel control button to alternate between a couple of different modes like auto, snow and gravel, which show up on the center display. And then we've got a small storage bin right here. And I would like to see this be a little bit more open. It's just really closed off with how far out these pieces go. But at least we have the storage bin, which is nice. Heated steering wheel button, eco button, two USB ports, and you don't get two on every trim. There's one on the base model. And then you've got this 12 volt power outlet, dual zone climate control with the red backlighting. That looks a little outdated, but it works well. That's on the top two trims, otherwise you get auto AC single zone on the bottom two trims. Now let's go ahead and put it in reverse so we can check out this surround view camera, which is standard on this top trim. So backing up, we've got dynamic lines and you've got your top down view over here, which is also really nice. And you can access that by pushing a button on the steering wheel. If you want, you can shift into drive and then move it over for your own plus and minus shifting, but you don't have full override control and it's a CVT, so you're not actually shifting gears anyways. These cup holders are nice and accommodating. They fit my large bottle and smaller bottles really well. Then you've got an electronic parking brake and brake hold button over here. The center armrest is pretty wide. I've really enjoyed that. It's easy to share with my wife. It does not slide forward or backwards. But we lift it up, we can look inside. It is fairly deep. There's no power ports back here, but it's nice to have an extra little tray. The entire visor does slide out, which is nice. We have an automatic dimming rear view mirror with garage controls as well. And that is optional on the top trim. So it's not standard, but we have it optional right here. Another optional feature is a dual pane moonroof, which is nice. And I'll show you that in the back seat. And uh, it's, it's just a nice little feature on a, a vehicle of this price point. And then in terms of visibility, the pillars up front are pretty skinny. And then out back, that whole area is pretty large and blocked off. And I'm not a fan in particular of that crossbar. It just seems to impede the visibility a little more than I would like. Taking a look at the back seat, on the door you'll see some of the sacrifices for cost savings. This is harder touch, the upper armrest is not soft. You do have a soft material right here and there is a bottle holder down there as well. These seats can recline just by pulling that. It's a little awkward if you are in the seat themselves, but otherwise you can pull that back and get a little reclining action going on. Now, one thing that is nice is I am sitting back here and I have this seat screwed all the way forward. And of course I can't sit here with my knees, but these seats can go backwards to give you a pretty good amount of foot and knee space. So sitting behind myself at five foot nine, I'm doing pretty well right here. One thing that I didn't expect is that we have heated rear outboard seats, which are two tier. So that is pretty cool. Those are only optional on the top trim. And then we have a 12 volt power outlet back there. No USB ports back here, but you could easily put one in down below. There's a little bit of a center hump right here. Not too bad. Uh, someone a little smaller probably could fit here. No problems. Possibly on the front wheel drive only model, you don't have this issue. The headrests are really easy to get up and out, just like that, no issues at all. Now, only the top two trims get this center folding armrest, which I thought was just kind of silly. Usually maybe the base model doesn't, but the bottom two trims don't get this center folding armrest. And something that's pretty cool with our dual pane moonroof, we can control it back here on whether or not we want it to be open. And it is kind of skinny back here, but still, at least you get this option, which is pretty cool. And when I'm sitting up tall back here at five foot nine, I have my hair touching, but I can sit up here just fine without my head touching or being impeded. Mitsubishi offers a 10 year, 100,000 mile powertrain warranty on its engine. And there's only one particular option, which is a direct injected 1.5 liter turbocharged four cylinder engine that is relatively torquey for what it is, but the power numbers are just not that great. 
It's paired with a CVT that simulates eight gears, and we'll go through that in the test drive in a bit. Miles per gallon is definitely lacking compared to the power output and the size of the vehicle. The very base trim gets the best miles per gallon. With front wheel drive, it can get up to 29 on the highway. The rest of them with front wheel drive get 25 city, 28 highway. And then this model with the super all wheel control gets 25 in the city and 26 on the highway, 25 combined. You heard that right. 26 miles per gallon on the highway, which is not good at all for this class. The positive to the super all-wheel control though is that you have a great enhanced ability compared to some other all-wheel drive systems. This has active yaw control as well, which simply put is the ability to control power between the left and right rear wheels. So it puts more power to the outside wheel. All right, we are on the test drive with the Mitsubishi Eclipse Cross. And right off the bat, my first impression is that this just, it feels like a, a smaller, nimble, tossable type of vehicle. It's fairly easy to maneuver around. It's, it's, it's really light, light on its feet is kind of the way that it feels. So I've been driving this around for about a week and I haven't really had any troubles at all with uh, acceleration and all of that. Let's give it a quick little run here. So you may have been able to hear the powertrain with the CVT and kind of the way that that shifts. It's, it's fairly smooth for what it is. It does still have a little bit of a wind up feeling to it when you do have to accelerate, which can get kind of annoying. The braking is good on this vehicle. I actually had one situation where someone pulled out in front of us at a red light and, and, uh, I had to hit the brakes pretty hard and it did a good job slowing us down. The steering is very lightweight and it's really quite nimble and that's something that I think a lot of you will appreciate. This is probably ideally a good urban and city type of vehicle, especially considering its small compact size. On the flip side though, despite how easy and nimble the steering is, it's really numb. I mean, you don't have any feedback whatsoever with this. And considering Mitsubishi calls us the Eclipse Cross, it's very disappointing in that regard. <laughs> but there's quite a bit of body lean as well. So although it feels easy to move in smaller, slower speed situations, it's still not a sporty vehicle. Mitsubishi kind of tries to make it feel like that, but it's just not. The one thing about this turbo is that it feels a little bit peppy at lower speeds and in town. However, once you get on the freeway and you really got to mash on it and you want to pass somebody or merge, you start to lose some power. This does not have a lot of power. It's got some low end torque, which is great for the city, but if you really need that speed, it's just not there. And not to mention, if you're going to be doing a lot of highway driving, MPGs are terrible with this. Now I'm done being so mean to this thing. One of my favorite things about it is that it's actually a pretty darn quiet vehicle. So I did the decibel ratings on the freeway uh, and on a rougher road that I do with every other vehicle and this has scored pretty well. I've been pleased with that. Anytime the decibels are below 70 on the interstate, it's doing a pretty nice job. And I haven't had any rattles in here at all. It's just been easy to live with, easy to drive, although I wish it was maybe a little bit more engaging considering the name. Um, and it just, I wish there wasn't the body lean that you get in this cause it's a little unnerving at some higher speeds, but overall it's done a nice job. The ride comfort is middle of the road. It's not firm, but it's not soft either. There, there's definitely some disturbances that get in here pretty easy. And I think that part of that is probably the, the fact that we have a really short wheelbase. It's just not a very long vehicle. So there's not, room for the front wheels and the back wheels to buffer out some noise when you hit some bumps. Now, the only time that I would want to use these paddles is when I'm going down a hill to sort of engine brake because they're seriously, they're not responsive. They don't give you full control. I had them going one time trying to test them out and the vehicle would do its own shifting on its own without me, even when I put it in its plus and minus mode. So 
I just wouldn't use the paddles. They're really large and they feel nice and they look kind of sporty, but there's really no purpose to them. They don't give you much in terms of fun factor. But overall, this Mitsubishi Eclipse has been easy to live with. It's been I haven't really had many complaints. Um, it seems to be pretty well done. But my biggest thing is that this one is priced at over $32,000. And I just got out of a Hyundai Tucson that was really well equipped. Although not all wheel drive, that one was about $32,000. And it just felt better. It drove better. It's a little bit more efficient. And uh, I, would, I would prefer other vehicles compared to this. And this is smaller compared to that and many of the other vehicles that some people might associate this with, but I honestly think the Outlander is closer to those vehicles and the Eclipse Cross here is closer to the smaller class of vehicles, the subcompact class. So it's kind of really in between. So you got to figure out, is this more my size compared to a different type of vehicle? Because it doesn't, you know, it, it's unique in its size. And the truth about it is that it doesn't outperform really any vehicle. So it's it's something you got to think about. If you're a Mitsubishi, if you're a big Mitsubishi fan, then I think you'll be happy with this. Mitsubishi's done a pretty nice job overall with what they've offered. So that's going to wrap up this review of the Mitsubishi Eclipse Cross 2020. Let me know down below what you think of it. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. And we'll catch you next time.